This is MBN Network Media News for all races connecting to the world. This is MBN Network Media News for all races connecting to the world. Mostly granted by His Excellency, the Special Guest of Honor and the Revealing Officer for today's historic occasion. We can see the Parade Commander, Lieutenant Colonel Salim Yusuf Hassan, riding on a white horse named GMB to take his position to commence the match pass. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, please have a view. The big screen still shows you the big event. The, the big event. <laughs> you know, um, the, the picture you are giving you from the Nazi uh, Nabia screen transfer airport is no less significant, but just so you know, as Cardi said, Paris is um, you are a human being, but you occupy a position at any given point in time, who knows for how long, and there goes former president Muhammad Buhari to that aircraft. Uh, well, I, I just like to mention that the bigger screen, it looks like the camera is trying to go into the skies as well. But we go up ahead. What you're seeing on the big screen, there's still a lot to expect from the Eagle Square. Actually, this is yeah. the March Pass in slow and quick time. Powerful display, honestly. It's always beautiful to watch. I mean, look at that. All marching in uh, synchronization. It's, it's just beautiful seeing the, the work that has gone into this by the way. Lots of man hours of rain. Rehearsals, and you have to get everything right. Everything has to be perfect, precise. excellent, precise. And that's what the government Jones will be expecting from the government. Mm. I think so. This is a typology of the expectations of Nigeria. All of your you know, decisions, the activities of the government has to be top notch, excellent in synchronization from the president's decisions to his cabinet to the national assembly. People have invested uh, you know, their votes in them, so they expect much of us. Excellent. So after that, we'll still look forward to the big one. Uh, the scenes is as the commander of the Royal Armed Forces. So as uh, you can see, it's a sign of the First Lady uh, of Obama. First Lady of Obama. <laughs> uh, speaking of speeches, you know, uh, Nigerians continue to put the former president to task on that very significant line from his first speech, uh, I belong to everyone and I belong to no one. So Nigerians were also going to be holding, looking forward to, you know, the significant promises, the significant lines, you know, the paradoxes, if any, of the speech that we're about to hear from the incoming president and the hope that well, we'll the incoming president. <laughs> <laughs> it takes a year to get the new president, and they're going to be, you know, holding him by his words, you know, in the coming four years. So we're looking forward to that inaugural speech. Most well, certainly. Um, yeah. And but don't also forget the inset. Uh, hopefully, we'll also show images of um, the former of our vice, vice president. Don't do like that. Uh, the former vice president uh, will also be uh, coming in any time soon to, for his own journey home as well. And of course, uh, so you can see the parade is still quite functional, quite active. And uh, you were talking to talking about the immense work that has come into this. Guys, you know what? We don't talk about working for Nigeria, making Nigeria better. The little less things matter. Ah, then you talked about the man hours that went into this parade. Someone composed songs that have been played. 
that is an instrument. I mean, look at the brass, mm -hmm. uh, the brass instrument. The it's ensemble. beautiful, the ensemble, the orchestra. They are playing in unison. Exactly. And I think, again, it's, it's what we expect from exactly. the government. Someone composed the song. So, the littlest thing that you can do for the nation is can you just keep that at the top of mind? Mm -hmm. You know, the, as we say, is it in PR and advertising, top of mind awareness? Mm -hmm. Let Nigeria be so focused on your mind that the littlest thing that you do, the wind that comes through your nostrils and through your mm -hmm. throat, is all about making Nigeria great. The work that each one of these fellows are doing mm -hmm. is about the greatness of Nigeria. You know, it's it in front of many presidents from various parts of the world that are here. You know, Aya, you always talk about our core values uh, and how the constitution spells it out, you know, uh, dignity, patriotism, and, you know, this speaks to those core values and they stem from institutions. Yeah. So we must build institutions and, you know, it's reminiscent of our earlier conversation, you know, about how Nigerians need to do their part first. It took a lot of commitment, a lot of hard work and resilience, you know, for men of the armed forces to come up with this that, you know, would, would cause so a let, Let's go back uh, to the Eagle Square now. Nigeria. Yeah, let's yeah. go back to the Eagle Square, take a little bit more, some more listening to this and perhaps get more pictures of what is going on right now. to rise as a mark of respect 
to the color. Officers and lack of sats in uniform are expected to salute. Thank you. This is where this is happening. Without him, Cardi, there would be no, no inauguration. Exactly. <laughs> and that, that, that's actually very, very instructive. Very instructive. You know, we, we often say that okay, we run a presidential system of government. People wonder, okay, why have three layers of government when you have uh, uh, 
it, when any one of them could have done just about anything. But no, um, the judiciary swears in the president. The president swears in the judiciary. The judiciary. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when the time is right. And when the time is right, uh, I, uh, the budget which is a document, a, a legal document of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, yeah. cannot become law without the National Assembly. Which so we, they all need each other. And the, the, the executive, the president, has to uh, literally write to open the National Assembly. Assembly. You know, every term mm. without that letter from the president's office, that cannot really happen. But hey, uh, this is it's a band. It's a mixture of you know, I mean, all of the you know, service the, men, yeah, the service uh, down forces uh, represented, and I must say, beautiful work. Uh, and it's a significant part of the ceremony, you know, so uh, prepared for quite some time by men of the armed forces. And, yes. You know, the ceremony would be incomplete without this, you know, beautiful parade. Indeed, and yeah. there's something a lot of people will want to see, the air display as well. Earlier on, we saw the aircraft with the Nigerian flag. That was just a I love that one. Okay. I really just, just showing you how you expect the Nigerian flag to be flown very high by everyone who has the cause to represent those flags. And they see really colorful, uh, you know, and the flags coming in behind them. I mean, I can watch this for as long as possible. It's possible, right? <laughs> that will be unfair to them. But yeah. they've been at this for quite some time. First, with a slow time, and now... It's easy to, to watch it again. Just record, not to, to YouTube. <laughs> just... Yeah, he doesn't have to record. Just play back on Channel TV broadcast. Uh, or just search for ACB's YouTube. <laughs> okay. This is the Eagles. Square. <laughs> the you know, the Eagle Square. 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 The performing in today's aerial display. The first aircraft was the Augusta 109, which you saw, proudly displaying the national colors during the hoisting of the national air defense flags. The crew comprised Colonel Leader Larry Azi, Dan Lieutenant Shaibu, and Ariola. Helicopter operates out of 405 Helicopter Training Group Enugu, unit commanded by Wing Commander Deji Omokunga, tasked with the conduct of advanced combat training for NAV helicopter pilots. The remaining four aircraft performing will be in the following order. Pictures again from Eagle Square, Abuja, and uh, uh, the Nandia Security International Airport uh, showing right now. Okay, well, we can we? Okay. Well, it, it, it's something that you would actually love to see when the air display starts right away. I mean, we saw a snippet, as I said, and you heard the announcer this, speaking about the first helicopter we saw. Now we're going to see some. More. This is one of the major highlights, really, and you know they have to be very precise. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, flying an aircraft, normally a passenger aircraft or a war aircraft, on a normal day is a lot of work. Mm -hmm. But for an air display, is even extra work because it comes with art, it comes with extra precision, and all of that. So this is going to be one of the major highlights uh, of today's inauguration. So, and are we expecting a landing as well? Well, they will land somewhere else, but not, of course, on the, ground. on the ground. Yes, you just see <laughs> them uh, fly over. And, uh, it's going to be definitely Did I hear you say and, and it all gives you, you know, a sense of pride in yeah. your democracy. It makes you feel very proud of being a legend. And you were saying like, earlier, are you about, you know, the need to translate, you know, this ceremony into, you know, you know, uh, you know, the lingua franca of other African countries that is not necessarily ours, you know, just but because Nigeria is, you know, 
one of the leading countries on the continent. It okay. It's important to have, you know, all the audience in the, on the African continent participate in this ceremony. Well, we, 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 that's a matter for other conversation later, but let's, we have a couple of gentlemen here with us who can speak to some of the, the significance um, of some of the issues, the symbolic meaning of uh, some of them. Professor Femi Otubadja is here with us, a professional of international politics and strategic studies at the Nigerian Institute of International Affairs. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you very much. As well as uh, Professor Sylvester Heine, who is a professor of political science at Lagos State University. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Um, you've been here with us uh, for quite a while. Oh, by the way, it will seem like um, activities, just a quick, quick one here, activities are ramping up, so to speak, at the National Namdia Security International Airport. Now. Yeah. I just to be sure I spoke to the former vice president. Uh, I'm not quite sure. It looks like actually the president or former president. Uh, yes, 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 former president, president. Mohammed Buhari, uh, there oh. with his wife, former okay. first lady, mm -hmm. uh, there uh, just yeah. departing. It would seem you had thought that they had gotten into the aircraft, mm -hmm. yeah, but it would look like that was another set altogether. Uh, there you go, former president. And don't forget that the former vice president and his wife and family will be on their way as well. Uh, we wish we could keep our eyes on all events at the same time, yeah. but let's just take note of that as well. But both symbolic events, both perhaps, symbolic, of course, yes. the bigger one is happening at the Eagle at Square. The Eagle Square. For a man that has, I mean, was number one citizen for eight years. This is definitely a big one. And you see uh, some of those members of security forces giving their, well, their salute mm -hmm. as Muhammad Buhari, citizen, <laughs> departs Abuja with his wife. Eight uh, years. I'm, I'm sure there will be lots of stories to tell. How oh, well, uh, most so certainly. Let's, let's ask uh, uh, the gentleman in the studio with us um, um, how, how this pans out for you, Prof. Professor Haini. Um, we're, we're looking at two events right now. Uh, which one strikes you significantly more uh, of the two events? This seems to be sick. I cannot do in one event though, but yeah. Actually, that the two events converge, you know, at the level of um, uh, the, the philosophy of power. Mm. You know, we say power is transient. You know, that's, that's basically what it demonstrates uh, in the government is coming in. And one is going. And uh, perhaps some four years ago, the idea that I might leave office, you know, may not have occurred. You know, that realization may not have occurred at all. You know, but now the reality has done it. Yeah. You know, it's left office. You know, a new person is in charge. So that's it. I, I feel that it has a big legacy, which is for the current leadership mm -hmm. to know that power is transient and that, you know, governance attitude should be about the people and nothing more. Okay. Well, yes, I think I share that. Um, the uh, interesting drama still both of them. Uh, they both point to the uh, fact that our democracy is growing, uh, getting stronger. Here you have one president, one new president means one, in, another joyfully leaving and going back to his. Uh, uh, to his, uh, whatever he's going back to, to his own town or whatever. Uh, it's a bigger statement. In, incidentally, Buhari is one president that you would have expected to seek tenure, tenure elongation, uh, a military general, and he was being good at to do it too, <laughs> but he did not succumb to it. In fact, he showed in the last day some enthusiasm to leave, and this is part of that drama. And it is good for us to see this. Uh, it's good for those who will come after them to see both the inauguration and the exit mm. that they are going to happen. <laughs> the day you are inaugurated, you must know that one day you will be like worry and walk to the airport and go away to wherever you are going. So I think they are good dramas. They, they complement each other. How significant is it for Professor Tupanjo that um, it's not just the president or the vice president mm. or their families that are living as a rock, so to speak, yeah. but there are several other um, uh, assistants, yeah. uh, appointees. Yeah. You know, there was this drama earlier uh, in the in the past few days or weeks that uh, there's going to be a number of job losses. Yes, yeah. <laughs> you know, well, that's, that's, that's the way it is. When when you are in Asorok, I've been there myself. I spent four years there, 
uh, uh, doing our own situation, and there was a military situation when there was no terminal date. Uh, in the end, we were thrown out. So just one yes. second, that's the president, um, Boden, well, in, the, the former president. <laughs> oh, God, it's okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> former president, um, boarding the aircraft and the Bukola, you you cited uh, pointed our attention to that picture on the front page of the guardian newspaper this morning of the former president backing uh, the camera heading into an aircraft just differently of course mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. uh, it would seem like that is being replayed right here right now mm -hmm. in the images that we are seeing and um, we were talking about it the other time uh, uh, Professor, I can't, my apologies sir uh, Professor Tumalo, that um, I think it was Cardi that was mentioning the relief that he must feel uh, you know having left office now or is it uh, mixed feelings do you think well, if uh, you've tested, uh, you know, position of uh, importance, like the presidency, you know, there are two angles to it. I, I recall very well, the, the barely a month when he was sworn in, in 2015, I went for an event at NIPS, you know, Kuru Joss, where he made the point that um, he thought that coming to leave Nigeria was going to be easy, that given the enormity of what he has seen, I felt like running away. Okay. Yeah, he said that. But I, I think that he must have enjoyed over time, the last eight years, mm -hmm. uh, those moments of, um, you know, importance, feeling as the president of Nigeria, people say that he's the most powerful president in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and I will whether our armed forces is weak or not. You know, so but Now living is surely going to be one of best feeling. Yeah. You know, a list of what ought I ought to have done, you know, if I, if I were to, you know, mm. read around it went. The, Is that perhaps the, the why of time, he has you know? had to apologize about two yes, times? Yes, that. And yeah. if you also look at the yesterday's broadcast, mm. I think it was more conciliatory. This time around, I didn't see fellow citizens. Uh, their dear compatriots, it was brothers. You know, I don't know where you got in that salutation, mm. at, you know, to the speech. So mm. that's it. So it's always a, a one of mixed feelings. You know, I'm living where there are things I could have done. The time isn't there, you know, and uh, perhaps, and uh, also a wish to the uh, new president, you know, to be able to perform and do well in office. Uh -huh. We feel some of those things. Indeed. Uh, just, we're seeing the Nigerian Air Force uh, play now, uh, the door closing, I mean, symbolizes the fact that the aircraft will be taxiing any moment from now to take off as former president Mohammed Buhari departs Abuja. He's under the power uh, to Bolatinubu at Eagle Square. You can see that in the inset uh, just at the bottom of uh, your screen. The Nigerian Air Force jet is ready to convey former president Mohammed Buhari back at the Eagle Square. Uh, there's a lot of activities uh, still playing out mm. from the air display. Uh, we're going to be seeing uh, the cultural troop display as well. Uh, then the inaugural speech and I know that a lot of people are looking forward to hear uh, what the new president would say what promises will be made and if there will be anything iconic as we saw with the former president yeah, I belong to everyone and belong to no one it's something that lasted literally all through his administration but still speaking to this closed aircraft I, I wonder for you uh, Prof what do you think Nigerians will remember Buhari for? What it depends what Nigerians. Nigerians are not, there's no, there's no, there's no person called Nigeria. There are people in his home state who probably will feel excited that he brought a lot of uh, good things to them. And uh, people in other places that do not feel so excited. Uh, one of the things that Wari will be remembered for was that he was an aloof president. He did not relate to us. Uh, and that's it's not uh, surprising given that he came from a military uh, background. He did not have that political touch of getting around and meeting people. So you think Nigerians want a president that would speak to them? Of course, the president, president has to be empathetic. He must be somebody. When we had, we had our uh, new so called debt forgiveness, mm -hmm. you know, we, we gave them about 12 billion US dollars uh, as part of the debt uh, buyback, you know, process. You know, Obasanjo made a national broadcast that he, he turned that you know whole process as second independence for nigeria yeah. the moment you are indebted 
you know, to external, you know, forces, international financial institutions. You lose your, you know, part of your sovereignty. It's already a negative sovereignty, you know, right from that point. Because you always need these people when you need the resources. So for me, I think Nigeria, you know, is uh, more bad. You know, right now, because the the, the the new president has a lot to do in terms of, you know, uh, managing that Nigeria's diversity. But, but you know, know, Prof, you know, that was part of our conversation earlier on, and I, I believe it's going to be part of political, you know, discourse for some time to come, the legacies of Muhammadu Buhari. And uh, one of the significant things that we were talking about was that, okay, well, if we're looking at the economic indicators of his administration that may be negative, we must also balance the conversation with uh, the performance of the outgone administration in terms of infrastructure development. Could there be, have been a balance, um, perhaps I should bring this now to Professor Tubanjo, could there have been a balance or um, you know, does one outweigh the, the other when we look at the performance of the administration where infrastructure is concerned? No, you don't, uh, you don't balance things. You want, uh, it's not a mix. They are all parallel lines. Uh, infrastructure is still a responsibility of government to do many things. Uh, you don't say because I'm doing infrastructure, therefore I will not do security. You don't, you know, that's not the way, that's the way to do That's why you have different ministries in the first place. Who are responsible for different uh, functions, and so um, I don't know. I know this big deal about infrastructure. Where are they? I mean, uh, you have a bridge. Uh, Nigeria. The second Niger Bridge is there. Oh yeah, boy! So the rail development is the rail there. Development to where? Hey, you have two hundred kilometers of rail to Ibadan. That's all you have on, uh, to Kaduna. Nigeria has 10,000 square meter needs for railways. The worry is up there as well. Yeah, it's there as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah you see, you pick up the link picking of uh, little, little development. This is uh, just incrementalism. This is incremental. Somebody comes and builds another kilometer road. We need fundamental uh, developmental programs. If you are going to have railways, let's have railways to go across the country. One area which that is parallel, that which we worry will be credited for, and that's what we are looking at. Yeah, it's democracy. But on the continent of Gwari, there was not a single political prisoner. He allowed democracy to start. Everybody, free speech, there was free speech. The free association and so on. So, uh, I, 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 but, but Prof, that, that could be debatable as yeah, well. We call the Twitter ban yeah, and individuals who so were arrested and election. clamped down on, on you know, for, for some, some form of name calling on social media. So, <laughs> well, would, would you come down that as freedom now? You didn't really do it. Well, it's, it's a matter of perception. Yeah. Some would say, yeah. Yeah. show arrest, detention, for example. Mm -hmm. It's a case, show arrest, or more show arrest. You know, we have that back and forth yeah. a lot. Some people look at that as if he's um, oh, there you go. There's the cultural truth is on. Yeah. So we don't do a lot of hard talk. Let's yeah. enjoy some of this interview. Then we'll come back to the yeah. show, but not to worry. Let's enjoy the cultural truth display now and make us sweat. <laughs>
our trust in God, our enduring faith in representative governance, and our belief in our ability to reshape this nation into into its society it was always meant to be. My brothers and sisters, Permit me to say a few words to my predecessor, President Mamadou Buhari. Mr. President, former. You have been an honest, patriotic, Lydia, who has done his best for the nation you love? On a more personal note, you are a worthy partner and a friend. I may easily be kind to you. For many ne- years, Nigeria's critics redesigned the map. Yet, we are here. We have suffered at times, but resilience and diversity have kept us going. And we will keep going. Our body may make us pain at times, but it shall never break us. Instead, we stand for a 
as Africa's most populous nation and as the best hope as founded champion of the Black Rift. As a citizen, we declare as one unified people, the foundation of one unified nation, national power. Of human progress in our very hands, we dare not let it slip. We live high this touch so that it might shine on every household and in every heart that calls itself Nigeria. We hold the beam aloft because it lights our path with compassion, brotherhood, and peace. May this great light never extinguish. Say amen. We shall and we shall reach out to all, but never put down a single person for holding these contrary to our own. We are here. To further mean and heal this issue, to care and enjoy it. In this way, forever, a new government regarding the election that the brought over at the end of this term. Yes, it was a hard fought contest. And was also rather wrong. Since the advent of the Fourth Republic, Nigeria had first had an election of a better quality. I said so. The outcome is not the will of the people. However, Hope for each and every one of all, regardless. 
sense of grief, ethnicity, or place of birth. Why support that? I thank you. So who did vote for me? I thank you as well. I set my hand across the political divide. I ask you to grasp an international happening and brotherhood. To me, political polarization has faded away. All I see here are Nigerians. We uphold this treaty, an excellent notion as a disagreeable idea. My fellow citizens, Nigeria again, we can speak of is more than just an improvement in economic and status. These things are important, but they can never comprehend the fullness of our story. Our mission is to improve our ways of life in a manner that nurtures our humanity, encourages compassion towards one another, and duly reward. Our collective effort to pressure in a thing to divide us. Our constitution gave us a nation on paper. We must work hard at bringing these noble documents to life by strengthening the bonds of economic collaboration, social cohesion, and cultural understanding. Let us develop a shared sense of fairness and equality. That must not only seem good for itself, but must understand that enter a self where good from the denial. Now must not see the south likewise. Whether from the winding creeks of Niger Delta, the fastness of Northern Savannah, the boundary of Lagos, the building of the capital of Abuja, as you see, okay, of Winter. You are all the people. As your president, I shall serve you with prejudice towards them, but compassion and amity towards all. In the coming days and weeks, the team will publicly details the key aspect of our economic program. Today, permit me to outline a broad terms a new initiative that define our concept of progressive good governance and bottom of the Nigerian ID. The principle that we 
that's how I finish fish. I'm very simple. Nigeria will be a partial government according to the rule of law, constitution. We shall defend the nation from terror and all form of criminality that threaten the peace, the peace and stability of our country. We shall remodel our economy to bring our growth. The GDP much better achieve the GDP much better than we have today. I assure you. Do that through job creation, food security, and an end. end to extreme poverty. In our administration, women and youth will feature prominently. Our government will continue to take proactive steps such as championing and credit culture to discourage corruption while strengthening the effectiveness and efficiency of various and corruption agencies. That's to be a good work in progress. Security shall be the top priority of our administration. Because neither prosperity nor justice have prevailed and make insecurity and violence. To effectively tackle this, we shall reform all our security doctrine and in architecture. We shall invest more in our security personnel, and it, it means more than an increase in number. We shall provide better training, equipment, pay, and power. power. On the economy, we target a GDP not less than six percent growth. We end to accomplish all of this by taking the following step: budgetary reform, stimulating the economy without Gendering inflation, industrial policy, to utilize the full range of domestic domestic manufacturing and lessen import dependency. The electricity will become more accessible. And affordable to businesses and homes alike. Our generation should gather double and transmission and distribution network must improve significantly. We will encourage various state governments to. to continue to participate in this effort. Our generation 
and distribution of their own. I have a message for our investors. Don't buy at foreign. Our government shall review all the complaints about multiple taxation. I review various anti investment inhibitions, which I assure that the best of and for a business this repartee their hard and dividend and profits own. My administration was great meaningful opportunities for our youth. We shall honor our campaign commitment of one million dollars and the digital economy. Our government also shall work with the National Assembly to fashion and open the most job and prosperity be. This will give our administration the policy space to embark on labor intensive infrastructural development improvement and storage plan industry provide improved social safety for the poor and daily and vulnerable. On agriculture, rural income can be secured by commodity exchange board guaranteeing minimum prices for certain crops. Animal products. A nationwide program for the storage and facilities to reduce spoiling and waste. All of that will be undertaken. Agricultural ops will be created throughout the nation to increase production and engage in credit, promote credit, engage in value added processing. The livestock will introduce the best of modern practices and step taken to minimize the perennial This is MBN Network Media News for all races connecting to the world. This is MBN Network Media News for all races connecting to the world.